Well, hey folks, this is John with Ozarks Backroads with you. I'm in the uh, Ozarks Backroads World Headquarters garage today. Uh, winter has reared its ugly head here in the Ozarks, and uh, we've had some really nasty weather, cold rain for about three days. So we're in the Ozarks Backroads garage today. I've got our uh, CF Moto our ibex 800t the 2023 model uh, new to the u.s uh, this season i bought this bike early this season i took it out west we ran around out in the desert and the mountains and i've rode all season on it and so far i have not had a panel off of it uh, the gas tank or anything to see under uh, the tank uh, the seat comes off the air filter is accessible right here under the seat so I have, uh, I've put in an aftermarket air filter and cleaned that one time. But as far as tearing into the bike and really looking at the guts of it, I haven't done that yet. Uh, normally when I buy a new bike, uh, the very first thing I do is take it apart, uh, check all the hoses, uh, make sure they're tight. I don't want any water, you know, any coolant leaks or anything like that from a loose clamp or something from the factory. I usually do that, look it all over under there, make sure everything looks good and put it all back together and then I'll, I'll ride it for the season. I didn't do that this year, I was pressed for time. So today we're gonna kinda get a glimpse to see how this bike's gonna be to, to maintain and to work on, uh, to see if it's gonna be a, a fairly easy bike to work on or if it's gonna be more difficult. So stick around, we'll tear into this uh, CF Moto, this Ibex 800T, and uh, we'll see how it is to get the gas tank off and get into the guts of this thing. To start with, getting the seat off is pretty simple on this bike. It's got a two-piece seat. There's a, a, a place to put the key right here. Put it in there and turn it, lift up here, and the rear half comes right off. The front half of the seat's got two screws right here that hold it down. So these are Allen screws, Allen head uh, screws. Get those out and then back and up and this will come off. This bike has uh, heated, a heated uh, seat on it, so I've got to unplug it right here. You actually lift up on the little white tab right here in the end of this um plug you lift up on it and then it'll it'll unplug and come right out of there okay so underneath our seat we've got the battery back here underneath the passenger seat uh, this is a gel cell uh, battery it's not just uh, acid and water it's got a gel in here that uh, allows it to be mounted it doesn't have to be standing straight up it can be laying back like it is here almost on its side uh, it's like an AGM, uh, an aggregate map type uh, battery is the same way. You can lay them flat. It's fine to do that. So that's why they've got the, uh, the gel cell in here because they didn't have room in here to uh, mount the battery vertically. So they've laid it down and put a gel cell in. Right up here underneath the, the rider seat is the little access door for the air breather which is really nice. Uh, you don't have to take the tank off on this bike to get to the breather uh, like the Tiger. I have to pull the gas tank off of the Tiger uh, to get into the breather, and that's just not cool. So uh, we'll go ahead and remove this door right here. So before I get carried away and get to tear it into this bike too far, I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the, uh, the ground cable off of the battery here. So I don't have any problem with any electronics. I don't want to unplug any sensors or anything with the battery plugged up on this bike. There it is. Get that out of the way. So when we get our lid off, you can see down in here, this is our, our uh, air filter right here. And it just sits in here. The breather uh, lid has some, uh, pushes it into place when the lid goes down. That's what holds it up against this area here. I've got some grease. I greased this to seal it up uh, when I had it out earlier. And I've also added a, uh, a piece of foam that I oiled. I got this from uh, Omnifilter. 
just a piece, a sheet of this. I cut it out to fit and oiled it with the air filter oil. And I've got some debris in there. It's, it's caught some crap. So it's doing its job. But basically it just lays in here, uh, just a pressure friction fit against my new air filter. This is like a K&N. It's not a K&N brand. Uh, I actually had to order this from uh, Europe uh, to get one. I think it was, uh, I think it came from uh, Italy. Italy, I believe, is where this was made. But uh, it wasn't cheap, but I don't like to have to order air filters. I'd rather just, to, I'd rather just be able to clean them and, uh, and reuse them. Then you can see down in the air box with the filter out. It looks pretty clean back in here on the, uh, on the dirty side, the intake side. I'm not seeing a lot of dust. Uh, that's really good. A lot of times, some bikes you'll, uh, will uh, tend to get dust off of the rear tire and draw it up into the, uh, into the intake, into the air filter, and it really gets the, <clears throat> makes a big mess in the air box and it uh, plugs up the air filter real quick. I'm not seeing hardly any dust in here at all, so I'm thinking it's not going to be bad to, uh, to suck up dust off a dirt road and get it in the air filter. All right, so over here on the left side of the bike, I think the first thing I'm going to do is start with this, this panel right here. We've got a, a panel under it that needs to come off for sure. So we'll take that off, and then there's a clip here, and then we've got a couple of screws up here. See if this thing will come loose. There's one. Let's see if this little panel here on the side underneath may need to come off. Uh, it's got to push in grommets there. Yeah. It's got a pin that pushes in a grommet there, and then this just slides in and forward. And then push that grommet in, and then a screw in the back. Oh, we got another screw right here underneath that one. Well, we've got another panel here that looks like it's, good. it's laid over on top of this one. So it's going to have to come off as well. Here at the front of the seat, there's uh, two screws on either side that hold these panels on. All right. It's got a push-in stud right here. Goes in a grommet. There it is. Okay, well we've got these uh, fasteners loose back here on the back of this panel, this panel here, and uh, we've got to get this panel right here off, uh, this silver panel here. Uh, it's laying over this panel we're trying to get off here over this tank. This panel right here covers up the bottom edge of this. That's where the screws are that hold this panel on. So that this cover here has to come off. Of, and then the only way to get this cover here off is to remove this. And these crash bars have to come off. So these have little plugs in the ends of them here. I'm just taking a putty knife, putting in here, give them a little twist, and they pull right out. Uh, I have one bolt in the bottom of the bar that bolts to a, a bracket here. It's an Allen head. We'll take this out. And then we've got two 13 millimeter uh, bolts, 13 millimeter headed bolts in the insides of these. And then on the front of the, the last connection is right underneath the front, this bar has a flange with a bolt that comes out straight down. A couple of screws that hold this little cover on here in the front, they're Allen screws. They're just a little Allen screw. There's another one down here. So once these two screws are out, you just slide it straight back. It comes right off. Put these screws back in the clip. Keep all the screws in the pieces I take off so I don't have to uh, try to figure out where, what goes where. Now our bars 
will come right out. I've got the other side already off. It came off of this side. Okay, the next thing we need to do is remove this little uh, cover off of this light. This little bracket right here comes off. Three bolts, three screws right here that hold this on. There's one here, here, and then there's one right back here. So I'll just take those off. So that exposes the big bolt right here that holds this on in the front. It's another Allen headed bolt. Right here is a 10 millimeter bolt that has to come out. A push pin right inside this vent up here that needs to come out. Get under it and pull it out. And then we've got two pins to pull out of grommets here. Got one more push pin on the back side of this panel right in the very front right here is another push pin that has to come out and then our panel is off. All right, that panel is loose, it's off. Now we can see all of our screws that we've got, to, our bolts we've got to get out to remove this panel right here. We've got our, our three screws here that hold the bottom of this panel. We've got those loose. We've got one little uh, Phillips headed screw that comes in from underneath right in the front corner of this panel that comes out. Right here at the top of the panel, we've got an Allen headed uh, screw that screws into a tab there on, on the top of this panel. We take it out. So this screw we took out on the top up here above this turn signal, we lift this little cover up and there's one more sheet metal screw right in the, right here on this panel, right on the top. So here's the little sheet metal screw that was holding this on right here. I'm going to put it back. Okay, we've got all the bolts off along the bottom of this panel back through here that we were after. And the bottom of the panel is loose now, but it is hooked right here into this front nose section. So we got two screws right here that, that bolt this, the front of this panel into this nose section. We'll take these out and that has separated this panel from the nose. So this panel is, is loose now. I've already done all of this on the other side of the bike. It's exactly the same. So I went through the same process over there. So now all we need to do is remove our um, fuel cover. The fuel cover holds the center of this panel down. We'll remove that and this panel should come off. So here we got our fuel, our fuel uh, cap right here. It's got five uh, Allen screws recessed down in here that hold it on. So we're going to take these off. All right, we got all of our screws out of our, our fuel cap. We can release the lock and it'll, the whole cap will come right out uh, off the tank. I don't know if this is going to come off or not, but we're going to give it the old college try here and see. Maybe if we lift up on the back. Yeah, get it up over that. Now I can turn my bars out of the way and that'll come off. So this entire panel has come off. Look at all the holes where the fasteners went in this piece. A lot of screws. Uh, they are the same from one side to the other. The exact same. But man, this is ridiculous. Now that I've got that off, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall. Screw it down and then close the cap. So my tank will be sealed off while I... I don't want to leave the tank open. So now my uh, 
my tank's sealed up. I don't have to worry about that. What an ordeal just to get a, uh, to get the cover off the top of the tank. So what I'm going to do now is just, uh, we got two bolts here at the back of the, of the gas tank. And this tank mounts about like most tanks do on these adventure bikes. It'll, it's held down in the back and then it's got uh, sliders that go over some grommets so you can lift this thing up or pull it back and, and off. So, yeah. So we can raise that up and look underneath there and see what's going on. I've got a connector right here. It looks like it might be for the fuel pump or the fuel sending unit. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. And it works just like that other plug we did earlier for the rear seat heater. It just, you pull the tab out and it comes right off. We've got our tank lifted up here with a block of wood under it. We had a plug on the other side that we unplugged before we took this off or lifted it. And that's where this wire here goes to. It runs over there and that's where the plug's at. Our fuel line right here, there's a nipple right here that this slipped over and it's got uh, two tabs on either side of the fuel line of this block that you pinch together. When it's on there you pinch them together and then pull it off. The only other thing I think we've got is this, uh, there's another vent line. We had one right here that went here and we've got one that goes to the canister right here on this nipple up here. I'm going to set this tank back down. I do have one more plug right in front. It looks like it's for the sending unit, for the fuel sending unit. And it's the same thing as we had back in the back. The same kind of connector. Let's see if we can get it unplugged here. So if we slide this back, our tank is off. You can see here on the tank on the side, right here, these little channels go over these rubber, these rubber uh, pads right here. The insides of these has the little channels that fit over that. So you can just slide it straight back and it'll come right off for you. I've been looking at this and in order to get to this, this left hand spark plug over here, this purge canister, this is the charcoal purge canister. This went to the nipple on the tank and so did this. And then there's another line that's a vent for it. It's kind of in the way, so I'm going to get it out of the way. And I think it's going to give me pretty good access to this left-hand spark plug. I really want to get these plugs out and have a look at them. So there's just two screws that holds this on. One on the front and one on the back. Okay, we got that loose where it'll slide out of the way. And then there you can see the... Uh, Right here is my other spark plug. So there's the other spark plug, the top of the coil uh, right here that was hiding behind this uh, canister. Right here is my uh, left cylinder uh, coil pack sitting right on top of the spark plug here. And in the front of this is a screw. It's an eight millimeter and I'm just coming down from above here and I'm getting on this screw. There it is, the little bolt went right in the top of the, the coil right in the front of it. I'm just going to put my fingers under it and pull up and there it came up off of the spark plug. Maybe it'll slip out the side. I believe it will. There it is. So there's my coil pack, or my, my plug, my boot. Let's see if we can get the spark plug up out of here. I've had a little trouble. Um, all of my sockets would not work, would not get down to the plug. You need a 14 millimeter socket, a spark plug socket for this. It's a small plug. So I had to go buy one. This is a 14 millimeter. I got a 12 point. Uh, just in case a six point wouldn't uh, go down around it good. This is a thin wall socket. So if you're planning on doing these plugs, you're probably going to need a, a, a 12 point uh, uh, socket 
a plug socket and a 14 millimeter uh, to get that out. Yes, it went right on there, no problem. If you got the right tool, it's not a big deal. If you don't, it could be a very big deal. All right. I was reading the specs on this plug to figure out what size it was, and it said the threads, the threaded part of the plug that screws into the head is 26 millimeters long, which is over an inch of threads. So that's a lot of threads. Yes. You can see it here. Over an inch of threads. So it screws way down through the head, cylinder head. And I'm looking at this. This looks really good. Nice and clean. It's not... If anything, it's running a little lean, which I'm sure it is. The motor has a lean surge to it at low RPM. So I'm sure it is running lean, but it looks good. These are uh, uh, kind of an expensive plug. They're a platinum tip, but the, uh, the owner's manual says they only need changed every 18,000 miles. So you're getting about twice the service out of them. So I'll clean these up, make sure the gap is good. And uh, I've only got 6,500 or 6,700 miles on this bike. So I'll probably run that another 10,000. Uh, probably change these when I do the valve clearance check. It's supposed to be done at uh, 18,000 miles as well. So the gap is right on about 24 thousandths. So that's good. So we're going to go ahead and put this one back in. It's on the money for the gap. It doesn't have... The electrode isn't worn down or anything. The gap is still, and it's going to take a minute to screw that inch long <laughs> plug through that head. There we go. Hit bottom. You always want to screw your plug all the way to the bottom by hand. Make sure it hits the bottom. Uh, you don't want to take any chances of cross threading that plug. We'll just snug that down, give it just a little bit don't go crazy on your spark plug we'll get our boot back on this boot here these little ribs are designed to go down in the tube right here fit down in it and those seal to keep any water or anything from coming up uh, getting down in it and then it's also got a little cover that that goes over the outside the top of it here and lips over this thing was kind of wadded up it wasn't in, it didn't go in the tube well uh, when they put it on at the factory. So what I'm going to do here, I want this to slip. I want these to slip down in that tube and not push this, uh, wad this up like it was. So I'm going to put just a little bit of grease, not a lot, but just enough to get it slick here on these ridges. So when I push it down in here, hopefully they won't uh, push up and, and get wadded up. I want this to do what it's supposed to do and, and seal this tube so there's no chance of any uh, water or anything moisture getting down in that. All right, we're ready to reinstall this boot. The other thing we want to look at here is to make sure that we don't have the, the spring in here. There's a, a shiny spring that clips down over the, uh, the top of the plug. Make sure it's shiny. It doesn't look rusty or anything. If it looks rusty, it's getting burnt, and it needs to be. Re this needs to be replaced. If you see a a, a rusty spring in there in a, in a coil pack like this that sits on a plug, why it's burnt up and it needs to be replaced. This one is nice and shiny and new looking. There it goes. There it goes. It's gonna go now. Push down on it. <clears throat> We can tighten that down. We don't want to go nuts. Just kind of snug it. When it hits bottom, just give it just a little bit. That's all it needs. We don't want to break the coil pack or anything. The other side is going to be really simple. Uh, I've got a straight shot down on it. So I'll go ahead and do this one and we'll take a look at the plug out of the other side. I've got the other plug out. It came out pretty easy. Not too bad to get to. And it looks just like the other plug. Uh, both of them are running 
on the lean side, I would say, but uh, they're both in spec. My uh, spring inside here uh, looks nice and uh, shiny. It's not burnt or anything, so I think we're in pretty good shape here on these plugs. Well, folks, if you've hung around this long, I appreciate it. Uh, we had a pretty good look at what we're getting into here on servicing this uh, CF Moto, this uh, Ibex 800 or the 800 MT if you're over in Europe or other places. Getting the, uh, the, the fairings off, the covers off here, uh, I would say is pretty difficult on this motorcycle. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the hardest, I'm going to say it's somewhere between a 7 and an 8. Uh, uh, in difficulty getting those covers off. So there's probably 50 or 60 screws, push clips, fasteners, bolts to put this uh, cover back on. Uh, that's a lot. Um, it's not the worst I've ever seen or done, but it's, it's getting up there pretty close. So to get into this, to, to get to the spark plugs or to do a valve check, to check your clearance on your valves, it's a pretty uh, big undertaking. Uh, if you take this to a service center, a dealer, or somebody to do that, it's gonna cost you some change there because they're gonna spend a lot of time uh, getting those fairings off. It, it's, it's a long process. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, slip my tank back on here and plug it all up. And then I'll uh, do battle with that big fairing trying to get it back under these bars. Uh, back into place. Um, I'm not going to video that. I'm trying to keep this a family friendly channel and I'm pretty sure that uh, wrangling that the, that fairing back in on there is not going to be uh, appropriate uh, content. So I'll save you all from seeing that. But um, once the fairing's off, it's not too bad. The plugs are relatively easy to get to. Um, I think getting the valve cover off to check the valves, it'll be a little bit of a process. There's a few things that need to be moved around, but I think it's, it's okay. It's not going to be that bad. I appreciate you all hanging out with me, uh, taking a look at this, uh, this Ibex here and seeing what's involved in getting into it. This is my first venture into this bike. So I've learned a lot. Um, I would say if you, if you try this, put every screw back in every hole when you take them out because there's a lot of screws. Uh, unless you're going to video it and take pictures, you could do that as well. But uh, putting the screw back in the hole when you take it out is a surefire way of keeping all, all your screws, uh, making sure that all your fasteners are going to go back where they should be. Well, folks, I invite you all to come back and see me. We'll tear into something else. We'll jump on something, go somewhere. Who knows what we'll do. Until I catch up with you again, y'all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.